Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello.
give people about five minutes uh, to join in here. We're in those five minutes. I have the meeting doc already open, so please add yourself uh, to, to the meeting doc. Um, on the agenda, obviously, operator working group uh, provides an update today, so I'll pass on to, to you immediately. Um, Fluxim, uh, the PR, um, I brought it up yesterday in the TOC meeting. Uh, so just that, you know, it's, I've seen the issue that you want to move to uh, incubation, but the official call to do the, to start the due diligence process has to come from the TOC. So I informed them yesterday and expect that they tell us that we should start uh, uh, working on it. Uh, if we want to accelerate things, obviously we can share the due diligence documents that we have been, been using in the past with you. Uh, last item that's not really red, that's just red because you usually use that edit right here. Obviously, it's uh, work on the GitOps working group. Um, I think you also have Cornelia here, that's great. Okay, so I would uh, propose we keep the, as the, long, the last one will be most likely longer discussions. Let's try to keep presentations to 10 minutes. That should give us plenty of time for the individual topics. And then I pass over to the operator working group after I figured out where my Zoom went so I can stop sharing, which I can't right now. Uh, this is inconvenient. Sorry, um, oh, here we go. So, sorry. <laughs> it was, we had another window with all the people in here. So usually, uh, who, who's doing it? Is it uh, Omar? I, I, I will do this. Okay. So let's start. Um, So, okay, um, hello everyone, my name is Thomas. Um, Omar will help me um, presenting the current progress of the operator working group. Um, yes, I want to recap, uh, make a short recap on the chart of the operator working group. So um, at first, the goals of the operator working group was to define an operator and a maturity model um, to define some patterns and use cases for end users and so on, who, how to use an operator and kinds of operator security. Um, there were some points defined what people may want to get out. So this, are, this would be what are the components of an operator, what components are not part of an operator and best practices and patterns. And the first defined goal of the operator working group was to finish the definition of an operator and therefore, we created a, a white paper. Um, so I think Omar will take on this slide. So what have you ignored uh, so far? Uh, oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So sometimes, uh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> So sometimes it's about semantic, uh, the wording uh, is something that is very important. Uh, and that is our one of our main goals to get the wording and the semantics right. So everyone can agree on it. Uh, that being said, we are trying to make the definition board range, uh, trying to describe the curricular, the characters of an operator and not being very specific as we understand that an operator is something that is broadly used uh, already. Uh, and uh, when we start talking with people, uh, we got some interesting topic and comments. Uh, one of the examples is the threat model uh, that we will take with SIG uh, security. Uh, and the second one is uh, an operator outside of Kubernetes as we are uh, CNCF working group. That is also something we are trying to think about it. And what happened in the last few weeks? So we started the operator white paper uh, and Thomas had lead a small group of people. I'm one of them. 
and we try to get consensus inside a small group uh, and from that consensus to go further out. We talked about what an operator is uh, and we try to define some base uh, wording and semantic around it. We switch to the capability model uh, that is described in the document as we felt that uh, it's more appropriate for the documentation to be to structure it in the capabilities way. Uh, and as I said, we found some outside contributors, some from SIG security and some from other uh, working groups of around operators. Uh, we starting and there is a draft and there was a link in the first or the second slide. Uh, and going forward, we will probably try to build something tangible, uh, some code samples, and maybe solve real world questions around uh, operators and how it can help uh, in the operation of day one and day two. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so currently we want to get to a first draft of the paper. So we are currently adding an improving com content in the working document. Um, we try to agree on the, on the sections during the meetings. Um, yes, and if we mark, uh, if we think the sections are ready, we mark them for review. As some of you might have seen, we um, have sent out a request for review in the, in the mailing list. Um, so everything which is marked for review um, can be re reviewed by every one of you. Um, so comments are very welcome. After two weeks of this review phase, we will raise a PR against the SIG app delivery um, Git repository. And afterwards, we'll discuss the um, changes the last time and merge this. Um, our goal is to get the first final draft until the end of 2020. I will hope that this will work. Um, yes, currently, um, we are trying to make good progress. So I want to relaunch the bi-weekly meetings, which are mentioned in the CNCF calendar. But um, when there, there is the necessary, uh, when it's necessary to have additional meetings, I will also invite for those meetings to get, uh, to, to make faster progress. Then um, we would like to set up an operator white paper Slack group as for the security white paper. Um, we will discuss this in the next weeks and um, we'll give you an information when this happened. But we also might uh, want to think about operators outside of the Kubernetes world. Um, that's what Omar said before. Um, there could be operators without Kubernetes. And I think as a CNCF project, we should be aware of this. So um, just as an ex example, like, like CF Engine, also Terraform could follow the operator pattern. Um, but we will discuss this. Um, in the last talk with Harry, we also uh, we are also thinking on doing a survey about operators. So um, we want to know which problems end users and practitioners are facing, so we could ans probably answer them. But also, it, I think it's interesting for the for the target audience um, which frameworks are used. So last but not least, we want to make progress and we want to get the use uh, useful document for end users and practitioners. So, Omar. so how to contribute uh, there's the link for the doc you can open you can read you can comment we value comments from any kinds uh, if you want to add something of course uh, you can add it uh, if you want if you think the wording that is currently in the docs is something that is not clear please or comment uh, or comment or uh, submit a fix uh, if you're not feeling confident enough to contribute, uh, so please don't feel like that and contribute. You're also welcome to join uh, our bi-weekly meetings uh, or send the uh, feedback straight to Thomas or for me. Uh, the feedback is very important for us as we try to get consensus around this topic before we go back and present the final draft. And last but not least, um, everyone who is not, who is not um, very conf confident um, writing operators or knowing what an operator is, um, every one of those people is the target audience. So exactly this feedback is very valuable for us. 
So um, this was the stage from our working group. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and it was short enough. Um, and yes, if you have questions, please feel free to um, ask. Thank you. Yeah, I think we discussed this before. So this has been a long time in the making or better not, not, not making. So it's good that, that they've been making uh, now actual progress on this. Great that you're involving the other operator projects and also the security. I think that's that's really good that we have widened the audience there and ensure that the projects are, uh, are well covered in there. Also the clearer focus on target audience, I think is helpful. Um, and again, yeah, I think it's also good that people contribute. I think what we just should avoid to say that, okay, let's start all over again, because that is, isn't really helpful. So, um, yeah, but I think it's, this is moving in the right direction. If you have, this, uh, especially if you have the project, somebody from the project in there, from the individuals, we can ensure that they also the projects working on operator related work will feel, uh, well represented by the white paper and also that you talk to the six, six security folks, how they built their white paper and copy it. That's great. And also that we have uh, offline collaboration. Obviously, same as Thomas being from Europe, we highly value offline collaboration rather than 2 a.m. in the morning in Europe type of collaboration. And I also know that some people can join the meetings as well, obviously due to other commitments. So that's important as well. But good to see this moving forward. Um, would be great if you could have that draft uh, that you said by end of the year before the holiday seasons, maybe ready for next meeting. That would be one more before um, holiday season. That would be amazing because then people can comment before. So usually after the mm -hmm. holiday season, things get get get, get dragged, dragged along, and especially this year, everybody will really deserve to have some relaxation time. But that's good. Uh, good to see that progress. And yeah, thanks also for stepping up here uh, on, on, on driving this forward. Thank you. Okay, next one is Flux. Who wants to speak for the Flux team here? Yeah. Um, so we have a, a presentation. Is it appropriate to run through that? It'll take about 10 minutes, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Then the recordings will also be shared afterwards, even for people who cannot join it, we'll, we'll redistribute it. Cool. All right. So uh, I will try the share screen. Trick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can someone give me a thumbs up <laughs> if that's what they expect to see? Okay, great. So uh, Flux has um, entered a proposal to uh, move from Sandbox to incubation in CNCF. And uh, we've been referred to SIG app delivery, which seems appropriate. And so this presentation is really about making a gentle case um, for you all to endorse this move ultimately. So I'm going to give a bit of background on Flux and where it's headed, um, and then I'll try and press my suit for uh, for making the move into incubation. So uh, Flux, if you're not familiar with it, is a uh, fits into a continuous delivery um, category of software. So it's um, the idea is that you keep all your um, configuration in Git and Flux syncs that into a Kubernetes cluster. Um, for the end user, this means that uh, changing your configuration and your operations can be done through Git operations, um, pull requests and so on. And this uh, became known as GitOps. Um, for a while, Flux and GitOps were sort of synonymous, but then um, GitOps sort of took on a life of its own. And since then there've been other projects uh, which um, are also about GitOps. And Flux is in, currently in the CNCF sandbox. So a wee bit of history. So Flux was about three years in and up to version 1.13 when it entered the sandbox, which was a bit over a year ago. Uh, at towards the end of last year, um, around the same time we we're entering the sandbox, um, we uh, were talking to the Argo team. Um, I see Alex is here, 
um, since Igo is also a very strongly uh, GitOps oriented project, or well, Igo CD is. Um, and we thought maybe we could merge efforts. Um, but what can I say? That didn't work out. Um, so in the start of this year, uh, we did some experimental work to um, in the direction of what became known as Flux V2, um, which I'll say a bit more about in a second. Um, and as we're nearing the end of this year, we are getting towards the point where Flux V2 has got feature parity with Flux V1, i.e. it can do all the same things, although not necessarily in the same way, because otherwise what would be the point? So by way of comparison, Flux V1, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, syncs a Git repository into the local cluster and it does some automation with regard to uh, updating YAMLs in Git, i.e. making commits on your behalf when things happen. Flux V2 um, is built from scratch uh, and uses things like the custom resources so that it is more sort of integrated with Kubernetes specifically. And so in doing so, it syncs arbitrary numbers of Git repositories to local or remote clusters um, and it does the automation thing as well. Um, so it's a lot more flexible and part of the flexibility comes from being based on what we call GitOps Toolkit, which is just a set of controllers that you can mix and match. Um, the idea is you can add your own things in there if you want to do things that are not covered by Flux. Um, and you can hook it into other systems like Argo Workflow and Tecton if you want to accomplish things that are sort of outside the scope of uh, that you can do with just writing code. So this is um, this illustrates that transition. Uh, Flux v1 work. This is 2020. So Flux v1 work is um, green and dark purple. So towards the start, that was pretty much all that was happening. And then uh, GitOps Toolkit and Flux v2 is yellow and all the other colors more or less. And you can see there's the sort of um, transition from mostly working on Flux v1. Uh, to working more on Flux V2 without giving up V1 entirely. All right, so that's kind of where Flux came from and where it's heading. Um, let's look at incubation. So this, uh, these are the criteria as set out by the TOC. And I've just picked out in bold the, the things that are relevant here. So. The project must uh, be used successfully in production by at least three independent end users, have a healthy number of committees, and a substantial ongoing flow of commits and contributions, and clear versioning scheme. And I think that last one is a stand in for having sort of process around releases and um, some idea of there being you know, backward compatibility and so on. So uh, since we've been in Sandbox, where a lot of things have happened, it's been quite a growth phase for Flux. Um, the headline with respect to production users is that uh, Flux <clears throat> was alongside Helm in the adopt sector of the CNCF technology radar for continuous delivery. So um, in CNCF's own words, that means that it was uh, widely adopted and fewer or none of the respondents recommended against using it. Um, the respondents in, in this case are the end user community of the CNCF. So that's quite an endorsement, I think. Uh, the people that fronted up and um, put themselves in, in our readme as production users tripled more or less, or just about tripled. Uh, we, we've worked at a bunch of case studies with um, various companies and some of the people from those companies like Steve Wade from Metal have sort of become unofficial uh, ambassadors for, for Flux and GitOps as well, which is great to see. And uh, all the other sorts of indicators have gone up by similar factors. In the community um, or with respect to the developers, uh, we 
uh, historically have had mainly Weaveworks people um, be maintainers because uh, it was originally a Weaveworks project. But now half the uh, core maintainers are from outside Weaveworks, which is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and in part, that's because we have, or, well, in the same um, vein with formalized governance um, to make it, well, first of all, to have it written down, but also to make it much more focused on uh, consensus and trying to encourage contributions. Um, we have weekly meetings that alternate between um, sort of Europe friendly time zone and America's friendly time zones. And we relaunched the website and added a blog and we have a team of people that are specifically trying to manage community and sort of social media and so on, those channels. Other stuff that's happening very quickly. Um, so we have a, a window where once we reach feature parity with Flux v2, we want to support Flux v1 users for six months, um, at least so that they can migrate to Flux v2. So that's, um, they already have a chance to do that, um, but we want to have a, you know, an official set window so there is a, a good period of time for people to be able to do that. Um, we, there's also a proposal to move Flagger, uh, which is another continuous delivery project into Flux project, um, which is nice to see. And uh, there's been some events which are specifically about GitOps, um, GitOps Days, which was run by Weaveworks. Um, there's been a US version of that and a, a Europe version of that. Um, that was quite successful and a lot of fun. And there's a GitOps working group, which um, I think that's actually on the agenda for later, or at least something approaching it is. So going back to the incubation criteria, um, Flux is used successfully in production. We've got about 77, about 77, about 80 um, people that are in our README that have volunteered themselves as production users um, to pick out a few control plane, IBM uh, and Rakuten. We're all pretty big users. Um, but also remember the technology radar um, where Flux was in the adopt category, which I think uh, I will repeat. In fact, I think that's quite a, an endorsement from the end user community of the CNCF. We have a healthy number of committers. Um, I mentioned roughly half the committers are from outside Weaveworks, although it was a, historically a Weaveworks project. Um, and there's about 13, I think 13 at last count people um, who are a maintainer of one or more of the sub projects. And there's a substantial ongoing flow of commits. This is um, subjective and it's called out as such in the criteria, but there's on the order of tens of um, PRs a week that get uh, entered, posted and, and merged. Um, often uh, from first time contrib contributors and non-maintainers. And clear versioning scheme, yeah, well, we were at 1.13 when we entered the sandbox, now we're approaching 2.0 um, and we use Semver, so we're quite concerned with backward compatibility and so on. So uh, actually, firstly, thank you very much for making room for us in the agenda. And now I'll go back to uh, questions. So when do you think that, that it will be, uh, is Flux 2 already released or is it is it's pre-release still, right? Yeah, it's kind of um, maybe beta level. So it's not at a 1.0, or I guess it would be 2.0. Um, still sort of going through the zero point minor versions. Um, we're pretty close to feature parity across the board with Flux V1. So I think in the, you know, the first bit of next year, that's when we'll start thinking about a, a GA, general availability. Stop it's it's worth noting that we actually there are uh, users of Flux V2 already in production. So even before reaching feature parity and and removing the beta label, we do have people that are using this in in, in Anchor. Uh, I mean, it's just a a general question. So, but what would be for the the ideal time? Because you're switching over to the new version, which is currently not 
to be released. Um, but a waiting version for uh, we, we, we too might be, I mean, the due diligence process is nothing that happens overnight, obviously, anyway. So that's why I was asking, it might be in time. On, on the end user examples that you brought uh, up or the user examples, um, you can obviously list um, also other commercial software vendors in there. I know that you have end users. I recommend using end users because technically the doc states end users. There are obviously some examples um, where then it's up to the TUC to decide whether they accept somebody as end users. It just makes the process easier if you're not listing um, other companies that build commercial software solutions on top of, of Flux as, uh, as the ones for the due diligence. Cloud and maybe falls in that category. Yeah, IBM would fall in the category. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you, you have those, uh, uh, I know. <laughs> um, I'm just making the point that it might be, um, that, that it's easier for that process usually. Yep. And obviously, if you have some um, version two, that's obviously helpful, uh, as Cornelia mentioned before. So having them on, on, on V2 is definitely helpful because that's the latest version as it was this bigger cut in there. Uh, yeah, on that merge of, around Flagger, I think it would be a, a, a separate discussion on how you think of this is, um, how this is going to work and how this fits together there. And it's also for, for us from the from the due diligence point of view, we have to think of how we're going to evaluate this. This is obviously happening more than projects are kind of merging together and getting um, closer to each other. And we had this situation in the past. It from an uh, from a due diligence perspective, it just complicates things uh, sometimes a bit, but not necessarily too much. Um, but that's definitely like to learn more. I also have to admit that obviously we also want to, as part of this process, also obviously want to have a closer look at uh, V2. But would you say it's now two projects or it's actually then three? Do you see GitOps Toolkit as a separate project? Not really. It, it really goes hand in hand with Flux V2. Um, Flux V2 is maybe more like the user interface, if you like, um, with the component pieces being GitOps toolkit. Um, I really just wanted to make the point that there is a, an effort to um, give room for integrations. Yeah, um, what I'll definitely do again, as I mentioned, uh, I'm pinging the TUC because like, we just want to follow the official procedure here. We don't want to slow things down, but still um, keep the um, keep the, the proper flow of things here. Um, yeah, thanks for the update. I'm opening up to to, to questions from the, the wider audience here. Okay, since there are no further questions on this topic, we have one more left that I think a lot of people are waiting for. Um, I'm sorry, I was yeah. I was pausing for for other people to ask questions. So, as a um, point of kind of protocol for moving he forward here. I think what we're looking for is the app delivery SIG to say, yes, let's enter the due diligence phase. Correct? That's the next kind of port point of procedure. So usually that, that's what uh, the point of procedure is that the TUC tells app delivery, have a look at this and start the due diligence process and let us know when you're done. And so have we gotten that? Has the TOC Ask no, but that, that's why I brought it up SIG? yesterday. And But I can follow up also with uh, our TOC is on. To, to move this forward. Okay. Again, it's and just a formality, but I don't want to start doing things that, that's within the responsibility of the TUC uh, or check whether there are any opinions from the TUC that we have to take care of first. But it, as we are talking about this right now, and as we're getting off this call, I'm, I'm talking to, to Michelle, who's our TUC liaison to help us push this, uh, push this forward here. And I also brought okay. up yesterday and to so the TUC call. Okay, and so the TOC will say, yes, please, please go ahead and do the due diligence and then the app delivery SIG will do that due diligence. Yes, and they might also decide that they also want to have a due diligence by uh, another working group, for example, securities is very often an obvious one that they want to have a look at things as well. But we'll stay in touch with you. I think Michael and Cornelia, you will be the primary points of contact. So if you need anything, we'll just reach out to you. Sounds great. And because usually we also take uh, also on the, the, the chair's point of view, 
it's really some time to dive into these, like even trying out solutions, working with them, uh, playing around, asking questions, um, and uh, moving things forward. But don't expect it. Like I think now it, it used to be an uh, maybe a bit more of a painful language process in the past, but now that we've standardized more of the due diligence work, especially here, it should go smoothly. I just want to ensure that we're not starting something off that the QC wants to have first opinion on. That's the only thing. Yeah. Okay, uh, next topic is, uh, I think it was brought up by uh, I, I might mispronounce. Yeah, sorry, I might yeah. mispronounce your name. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Go ahead and try. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm but shopping boss. Yeah, just just make it easy for you. Shopping. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So that's the whole topic around the uh, and finally, I also have add some color there. Um, obviously, there was the it, it's about the GitOps working group that you announced uh, during Cube, KubeCon. Um, in that conversation, also with with Alexis and others. I started that first charter document. I think that still needs uh, some more content there. There were also some comments already on there. So like more semantics, but still important uh, about this um, uh, this topic around like calling it a manifest or calling it something else. Uh, just there is a lot of interest in this. Um, and I think you also submitted the GitOps working group as a sandbox proposal as well. But I'll give you a chance to just introduce it to the uh, app delivery stick as a whole, and then obviously ask others who have already questions to, to ask those questions. Yeah, I mean, just, just to be clear, I didn't propose it, but I just wanted to bring up the discussion. Yeah. So if Michael and others would want to chip in with details, that'd be awesome. Um, so so I think so I'm Shobhik, I'm from Red Hat, um, but then I'm basically talking on as part of the Argo community. I'm an Argo contributor, and I have some of my friends in the Argo community in this meeting as well. Um, and I think I wanted to bring up this topic today to kind of mention that we are very excited that there is a work group that has been proposed, and I would love to know more about it than what I've read online. Um, it's a great move. I think this does give us a chance to actually serve different customers and cube and cube users around the world around GitOps practices. Um, my, my only comment on that would be that uh, it would be great if we could make it a little more vendor neutral and a little more technology neutral if possible, which means there are other CNCF projects also that like Argo CD, which is pretty popular out there, which is need to ensure that um, we drive this from more from a practices perspective than a very specific technology perspective. Um, so I just want, want to bring the topic up. I let other folks chip in if needed. Alex, Mukulika, John, um, in the Arab community, if somebody wants to add something. Sure, Vic. I so, think you so covered it pretty well. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. And so I, I would love to jump in right away. And I will say 100% um, that we are completely with you on the neutrality. Our goal here is not to make this a technology specification or anything like that. It's very specific, you know, like that it's, we just talked about flux, that it's flux and nothing else. This is really about um, addressing the set of concepts. GitOps is a set of concepts. Um, and it is really about serving the end user community. Um, as I, I like to joke around that GitOps is the center square on the buzzword bingo card right now. Um, everybody is talking about GitOps and everybody is claiming GitOps support or GitOps capabilities. And we don't believe that, um, you know, taking legacy approaches and calling them GitOps is going to serve the, the, the end user and the consumer very well. And so this is all about serving the end consumer um, and helping the community understand that when it comes to doing modern cloud native operations, we want to embrace certain patterns, like fully embrace the reconciliation loop that is so central to Kubernetes. Now this isn't specific to Kubernetes, back to the point of technology neutral and vendor neutral. Um, even though Michael earlier talked about the fact that Flux V2 is from an implementation perspective, more Kubernetes, but what we wanna do with the GitOps working group is really talk about the concepts. 
talk about the fact that it's not just the runtime reconciliation loops, but that having a reconciliation loop around delivery that enables us to do things like drift detection and things like that, those are the concepts that we're aiming for. So I completely, um, you know, being one of the organizations, and for those of you who don't know me, C, uh, Cornelia Davis, CTO at WeaveWorks, being one of the, the organizations that kind of brought this to um, the, the working, the, the app delivery SIG and, and came out with this, this concept. We, all of us are, myself, you know, WeaveWorks as well as the other organizations are really looking at this being a conceptual thing and serving the end user community. It's not a vendor, it's not a ISP sure. play. Sure. Thank you. Hundred so, percent. And I'm thrilled at. I will say. So I'm sorry. I, I promise I'll zip up in just a moment. <laughs> when um, when Alois uh, sent out the note and said, "Here's the Google Doc. You know, register your interest." I was just so overwhelmed and delighted with the number of folks, and to hear you say it with the emphasis that you did, that you're so excited about this. I mean, we're we thought that would be there and I think it was made even more than we anticipated. So thrilled with the interest. Great job, thank you. Thanks Cornelia. So going forward, will this be a work group under app sick delivery, app delivery sick? That's the expectation. Okay. That's my expectation. I think we are, we are pretty flexible on the work group. I think with this charter document still needs uh, some work and we need to do some housekeeping that was also brought up uh, yesterday in the TUC call because you wanted to announce it during KubeCon. We were, okay, let's keep it under currently the Flux CD org. I, I brought this up to the team beforehand and say, yeah, okay, that, it takes some time to move it out of the, the I think this, this would just make it definitely more neutral Alexis mentioned that he'd already talked to, to the CNCF. So if you need any help there, um, please let us know. I mean, technically you can create a separate org and just invite the, the CNCF, that's what most projects do, that they have full control over them. So that would be easy, um, easy to do. I think it's also crucial that you think about the governance model, uh, especially as it comes from Flux and Weaver. I know you want to have it open, but there's like other projects obviously that are interested in this. And um, I think also like working on the on the on the charter topics uh, and moving the things forward. Hi, this is Paul Mori from Red Hat. Uh, I know a couple of you already. Um, I wanted to just suggest that uh, since there's an intention to make it vendor neutral, uh, knowing that it can take a little while to get like GitHub repos moved around and stuff like that. I think it would just be worth putting uh, something, maybe a couple lines in the README, Cornelia, to articulate what you just said around neutrality. Uh, I took a look at the repo the other day and, and sort of had some questions about that. So I think that would go a long way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that feedback. We'll do. I think it can be done, done, done easily and I'm happy to, to support on this um, if needed. Uh, so creating the separate org, have to check in with Alexis where this is. But I know from uh, like needing project from the CNCF, this usually goes easy. Orgs are sometimes a bit different on the GitHub side, but that I think would definitely be helpful. And also was it a collaboration on on the on the charter? And again, I'd recommend maybe some of the charter orders who definitely also come who, who can obviously comment on it as well. Uh, as you read it, obviously has a massive interest here, so. Um, hey, this is Josh Perkins from SIG Contributor Strategy. Um, the working groups can either be independent of um, SIGs within the CNCF, or they can be under SIGs. Um, I think it would make sense, given the nature of this one, for it to be under app delivery. There isn't a clear reason why it would need to be sort of shared between multiple SIGs, unless I'm missing something. Um, in which case it's actually fairly easy. Do, does SIG app delivery have its own repo at this point? Yes, we do. Because the answer would be to just give the GitOps working group part of that repo. Or if there's some reason for it to have a separate repo, then just email the CNCF staff and ask for that and explain who's gonna administer the repo. 
Yeah. So I'd love to, I, I, I like the way that you characterize that. And I do want to um, pose a question. And I'd love, especially since we have so many active participants today to get some other um, uh, thoughts on this. So GitOps is something that we often talk about it from the perspective of applying the GitOps model to app delivery. <clears throat> but the GitOps model is actually far more generalizable than that. It's not necessarily just for app delivery. It could be for literally anything. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, they, you know, we run Weave Cloud at, at Weaveworks. We run Weave Cloud on AWS. And one of the things that we're putting in place, one of the things that Amazon recommends if you're running on Amazon, and we do run on Amazon, is that you have alerting set up for your S3 buckets so that if the permissions are inadvertently or intentionally set to public, you have to have an alert so that somebody, it, it doesn't happen inadvertently. So there is an example of where a GitOps pattern works really well is that you can specify, this is the way I want my, my permissions set on S3 and it's constantly watching that. And, and you've specified that in a Git repository somewhere and you've got some reconciler that is watching those permissions. So here's a case where it isn't so much about the app delivery, but it's around configuration, operational configuration of some other system. And so I haven't been super worried about whether we do this under app delivery, because I think it's a reasonable home and it, it gives us kind of a, a starting point, but GitOps itself is not constrained to just application delivery. Okay. Okay. So thoughts? Everybody is using GitOps for clusters, reconciliation. They have started using GitOps for lambdas. They have started using yep. GitOps for AWS resources. Uh, so agreed, yep. but uh, I think uh, since so many vendors and companies are interested, uh, it felt like app delivery SIG is more neutral home. And But any other suggestion is fine as well. Yeah. Yeah, I 100% agree. I'm not, I don't object to it, but I just wanted to bring it up in this because it's so so much broader than that. I share that feeling uh, from the operator working group. So it's kind of the same. We yeah. started with the yeah. conversation around Kubernetes and then understand that it might be broader outside and for and be applied also to things that is not a necessary Kubernetes or not necessary uh, operating things that are inside Kubernetes. Uh, and I think that is something that we will, in SIGUP delivery, will feel more and more uh, that things are starting from the application perspective, but uh, going broader and, and also infrastructure and configuration. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a choice. I think that what, what uh, CNCF can offer is obviously this in, in like independent and as, as multiple uh, vendors are, are interested. Working groups have kind of an interesting history, Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you look at some of the CNCF documents, they are still stated as like being sponsored by a TSC member, then they moved into the six. So there's multiple documentation out there how they, they actually work. So SIG app delivery is... Uh, is, is open to, um, is obviously open to supporting this as well as created the charter documents. We have a lot of people there. We can help you uh, setting up meetings and so forth. We can also help you with um, organizational issues like if you need a dedicated repo. Um, I think it should move out of the Flux repo because it just creates a, a lot of questions or, or it, like an imbalance that uh, some people don't feel, feel comfortable, um, not, not feel comfortable with. Um, which I think is fair. Um, and then we should ensure that we have to part and I think we'll have the participation of this. Um, there, I think the, the key is a charter document and also these exist currently in multiple places. I think some cleanup work needs to be done. And I think what's kind of confusing is a submission as a project and as a working group at the same time. Which is some others, like if you look at serverless, they have a repo, they are kind of a specification project, while they're also kind of like a working group. 
But that it, I think the key question is, do you th see this as something that will go through that process of a typical CNCF project uh, where it's like right now it's sandbox, uh, then we move it to incubation and then we move it to graduation? Or is it really the collaboration around the concept and delivering things that's much closer to work that a working group usually would do? I, I'd say, let me point out that serverless isn't a project. The thing that's specifically a project is the serverless workflow specification. Yeah, that, that's the one, yeah. Which is mm -hmm. different from the serverless working group. In other words, there's a serverless working group that has a project about one aspect of serverless technology where they want a specification. And I could see this GitOps working group eventually having that, right? You could have like the GitOps working group and then at some point they could decide that they really need Git reconciliation loop specification, which would then be a project. Yeah. I mean, certainly some of the goals that, that I, I personally, and I think some several of us have in mind is that we want to, within the, the um, working group, we wanna do things like document a lot of use cases so that we can help our user community understand where this is applicable. We want to maybe establish a set of patterns. Um, and in all of those things, I think are more around the helping users get started than they are a specification. Whether there's eventually a specification, um, I, I think it's too early to tell. I can't think off the top of my head of something that is so strict that I would call it a specification. We did talk about the term manifesto and there are some you know, very valid concerns with using that term from, from kind of a diversity and inclusion perspective. Um, but I like the concept of you know, the agile manifesto did quite a bit to help the community understand that taking your waterfall process and breaking it down into two week increments against your waterfall process wasn't the same as real agile. So it's really more along those lines of helping people kind of shift their understanding to the, the these new models. And so I don't know if there's gonna be a specification at the moment, I don't see anything off the top of my head. Yeah, maybe let's, I mean, we have some discussion points still around that working group. Uh, let's try to get some more clarification in the next two weeks because we're already with on top of the hour here. And then a journey in two weeks from now where we have hopefully more, more clarification okay. on, on those topics. The good thing is um, we have the charter document where a lot of people declare interest. And I think it would be good to find a way to keep these people in the loop. I think it, you have like, Created quite a lot of interest, which is good. And uh, I think getting them on a the first call is definitely helpful. If we need a meeting, that's usually something the CSF can help as well, like scheduling a meeting. Um, the, the CSF calendar gets fuller and fuller, though. Uh, I think it's definitely doable uh, if we need one there. Right. I think as a next step, we need to figure out how to have this group engage, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely want some kind of a regular cadence in terms of working group meetings. And then, yeah, we have a lot of work to do to set up the scaffolding, I think is the, the next step. Okay, yeah, that's, we, that, that's, I think, continue this discussion two weeks from now. I mean, it's good that you pushed forward and moved things. And uh, I think it's normal then when you start things off fresh and you want to move fast. You have to do some of the, the cleaner work later on, which is totally fine. Uh, yep. You should just feel, ensure that everybody feels comfortable with uh, the direction we're moving in. The good thing is there is there's excitement. And let's work on this and uh, put it on the agenda for next time as well. So that's something we'll definitely move by then. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I think then we are done for today. We are. Usually we're scheduled for 45 minutes, but uh, mo most of the time we use the entire hour. Well, it's good to see everyone again after KubeCon and Thanksgiving. So let's talk again in two weeks and have a nice day. Bye. So, Aloise, I have a, a very off topic question for you. Is that yes. a real background behind you or is that? That is a real um, background behind me, yes. That is such a tremendous piece of artwork. That's not fake. That's what? I, 
That's not fake. That's actual artwork, yeah. Yeah, no, that is gorgeous. I've been looking at that art the whole hour and it's beautiful. So I don't know why you've been hiding that with your, your backgrounds because it's- No, beautiful. it was just the other way around where I was sitting the other way around. I changed my okay. city. And this is actually <laughs> a, a photo that I took. So this is not just bought artwork. This is a photo that I took in Thailand. That's years fabulous. Ago. That is fabulous. So I might start selling beautiful. my photographs then. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. New, new, New source of income. Yep. Okay. Tough business, I think. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. A lot of competition. Yeah. All right then. Okay. Everybody. Thank Have you, everyone. Day. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.